Steve Bentley here, Off-Road Grind and Bentley Custom Off-Road, and we just finished up this Lexus GX470. <clears throat> little misty, cloudy morning here today. Anyways, it came together really nicely. I'll take you on a quick tour of it, but uh, I'm gonna show you how we got this all together. We made some rock sliders, some uh, DOM tubing on that, one and three quarter inch uh, round tubing and then some two by two, three sixteenth inch square tubing for the extensions in the main rail. And then put a high clearance bumper in here. So we cut out the back cross member, um, put in a really beefed up hitch system in here, down in the middle there and on the sides. And then if he is interested in towing, he can always use the side um, rails for the, uh, whatchamacallit, the uh, Kurt hit style hitch. Anyways, we got the swing arm all dialed in and got a, an aluminum table on here. This just drops down. Got some support in here. It's kind of like a mini moly panel of sorts. And on the back, and this swings all the way out. And lift this guy up. On the inside, and that's going to be a stop for almost full extension. I'll go in there, and then we can drop the table down. <clears throat> Use that out in the, the back of the truck. So, great little setup there. Really high clearance bumper. Lots of uh, capability there. This is a nice, strong swing arm. And now on the back, we've got the license plate light and camera mounted in to a little plate bracket with some bolts that are in there attaching behind the bracket. So came together really nicely and we'll show you how we do Okay, we have a nice little GX here from Florida. Michael's decided to drive his truck here. Uh, he's got some business in Texas, so drove here from Florida the other day. Um, and I got the truck for a week. So we're gonna put on some rock sliders, which I've already made, and get those coated later. Once we've got the rear bumper ready to get coated, and then we'll pop the rock sliders in. But we're gonna put some rock sliders in, build a super high clearance rear bumper. So we're gonna cut the rear bumper cover up and weld in a cross tube, 3 16th inch, three by two, brace the snot out of that because he wants to be able to tow a bit with it. And then also try and hook up a connection between the this OEM cross hitch and get that tied up into the bottom of the other cross member that I'm gonna put in so he can to occasionally tow something bigger. And then we're gonna put a big center tire carrier on here and a table in there. So let's get at it. So the first thing we're gonna do is um, I'm gonna move the truck over a bit so I can clear this area out. And then I'm gonna cover up the vehicle with a little um, waterproof cover, keep the dust off it. And we're gonna measure out the bumper cover to the door. Um, we're gonna have a hinge on this side here. This is the GX, so the door opens to the right. And then we're gonna have the swing arm come out this way so the table can fold down. So we're gonna have to cut into the bumper cover a bit here for the hinge. And then um, that'll be dictated though by how we um, get those side rails cut forward. I like to cut them at a bit of an angle to increase the departure angle. And then um, we're gonna pull that hitch off, cut off the resonator, and then um, put the latch out over on the other side, kind of make it equal, I think. We've got, yeah, we're gonna have to come out a little bit with the, the hinge and the swing arm in order to get that table in behind the back of the truck here. So hopefully it doesn't rain today. It looks a little 
cloudy. But once the humidity drops down later, I'll put another coat of paint on the cover for the rear of the pickup. Got a coat on yesterday, but let's focus on this just GX. Yeah. I think I'm gonna try something a little different here when it comes to the audio. And quite often what I'll do is the audio out on the field, but I'm gonna do that inside here. So what I'm doing here is just taking the resonator off and then undoing the hitch and then taking that back bumper cover off. So I wanna get that door um, connector arm off, pull off this cover here. And then there's some 10 millimeter bolts across the back. We're gonna undo those pretty quickly. And then that allows us to get most of the connectors that are holding that bumper cover on. So these are little 10 mil bolts across the back. There's some up inside the wheel well and a couple underneath on either side and across the back as well. So once you get those off, you're not gonna have a whole lot of trouble getting the bumper cover off itself. It kind of pops into the top on those little black brackets that you see. So you wanna yank on that, pop that off. If it's not coming off, you probably missed some screws or bolts in there somewhere, just get those out and then it'll pop off pretty easily. But once you've gotten all those out of the way, now what you can do is start focusing on the actual build. And before you take the bumper cover off, the one thing that's good to do is just measure out where that bumper cover is in relation to the back door. Because once the bumper cover comes off, you don't want to have to keep putting that back on to figure out where you're putting your bracket. So measure where the bumper cover is in relation to the back door. Um, I think it's usually like four and a half to five inches or so from the back of the door and you just want to measure that out write it down so that you have that information you can always measure it off the bumper cover itself and you know see where the door is in relation to the bumper cover but i just like to measure it right on the on the truck so that i can figure things out and, and build the brackets in the right location so just messing around here with the um the cover on the other side is probably a screw that i forgot and once you get that off then that'll pop right out there we go so once you've got that cover off, then the next thing is we're gonna measure out and cut down the side rails here. So I wanna measure out where I'm gonna actually end up putting the side rails, and then I'm gonna cut that center cross member out. Because once I figure out where I want those side rails to get cut forward to, that's where I'm gonna actually weld in the cross member. I'm gonna use a three by two rectangular tube, 3 16th inch thick, big heavy chunk of steel to re-brace up that back bumper cover or that back bumper frame. And then what I want to do is actually put it up a little higher so I can increase the departure angle of the truck. So right now we're just going to get in there, weld this or cut this thing out, use a combination of an angle grinder, cutoff wheel and a reciprocating saw just to get the right um, reach in there. It seemed to be pretty tight. so. Once you get that out, now you can start working on those side rails. And it's really just get that angle. I just do a 45 degree angle and I'm going to weld on a 3 16th inch steel plate across the back of that cover or that cut out that I've got. And now I'm working on the little notch that I'm going to drop the cross tube down onto and weld that into the frame. Um, but I'm going to put a couple of um, steel plates across the back of that side frame rail and to cap it off. And then I'm also gonna use those plates to weld the shackle mount into that you'll see come you know, pop up on the video a little bit later. So this is a pretty important part. So you wanna make sure you get your angles pretty set properly. And then also do it the right distance from the truck so that it's equal. You don't wanna cut one too far forward than the other or too much lower than the other. And then your cross tube is you know, angled forward on one side or angled down. So you want to make sure you, you do a pretty good job of this, measuring it out. And then once we've got that angled, then we can put in the cross tube, as you see right there. And then these are the, um, I guess the brackets for on this side is going to be the hinge. And on the other side, it's going to be the latch mount. So we're going to be putting on a receiver tube in here. So I'm just bracing in with some gussets here. The the receiver tube. I just buy a receiver tube um, on on Amazon. A lot easier. They do a good job putting that together. They're usually, oh, I don't know, like twenty to thirty dollars, depending on the size you get. So you're gonna get a, a, a two-inch receiver tube, and I think this one is nine inches long because I wanted to have enough forward 
of that cross tube to be able to put a gusset in there. If I had went with a six inch one, I think it would have been a little too short. So anyways, we get some welding going on in there, weld that in nice and um, securely, and then we're gonna be bracing the entire tube up itself a little bit more off on the sides into the, into the inside of the frame rail itself. And you'll see that in a second. So there is the tube. You can see the side rails are angled forward right there and probably getting ready to weld in these cross tubes that you, or the angled braces that you see on the bottom and bottom right and bottom left of the screen. Those little uh, 45 degree cutoff things. I'm gonna weld those into the front side of that cross tube and then into the inside of the side frame rails of the of the truck. So just uh, welding in the tube into the top of the um, side rails there. Make sure you sand those down and get that paint off that the Toyota coats the frame with. You don't want to be welding through that obviously. And then anytime you're welding in and around stuff like that, make sure you're wearing a respirator because that's pretty nasty smelling stuff when you start welding on it. So here we go, we got this all welded in, capped off. There's uh, plates on the end of the side rails. There's uh, bracing that goes into the end of the frame rails as well. And then we've got the hitch all welded in and we've got the shack hole mount, clevis mounts, the shack hole mounts, whatever. They're all welded in as well. So this went out to bear, went along pretty quickly. I just angled the ends here of the cross tube to better match the, you know, the flow of the side of the truck. And it's kind of a bit of an underside view of everything underneath there. So hopefully that makes sense. So next step, once we get that all done, we're gonna be starting to work on the, um, the swing out. And this is the tire swing out that we're gonna be putting in there. And then on the front of that, we're gonna be putting on a table. So we wanna make sure we got enough clearance in there, but we wanna get the length right as well. So what I'll typically do is put that across the back, get a level and make sure I've got it at the right um, angle. Before I get going on to doing too much more, I wanna weld in the hinge to the end of the swing arm. And then I can start figuring out, okay, where is this gonna go? How am I gonna angle it so it fits across the back of the truck properly? But right here, what we're doing is just marking off the, the hinge body on the end of the swing arm, and we're gonna notch out the end of that swing arm. So I'm just making sure I've got it pretty much level on either side. So I'm gonna do it on the top and the bottom of the swing arm. Make sure you find the seam of the swing arm. So now I've got it on the left side um, if you, as you're looking at that. And I'm gonna put that on the inside of the, of the build. So I'm gonna have it facing forward. So I'm not looking at it um, just in case that shows through the coating. So what I'm doing here is just making sure I've got the depth of that notch exactly the same on either side. So these are a couple things that you can do. You can mark the side of the hinge so that it's lined up properly. But what I want to do is, as well is I want to make sure that the outside of that hinge cylinder is on the inside of the tubing so that the thickness of the wall of the tubing is outside the hinge cylinder. That way, when I cut the notch out, I'm not making a really sharp edge on the, on the edge of the, on the tube because I want to make sure I've got enough metal there to get a really good weld in there. And if I put the hinge cylinder on the outside of the tube, then what's going to happen is when I cut it, I'm going to have a really sharp edge. So I want to have a blunt edge on that tube. So you'll see that as I go through here and I start to cut this out. So we're going to cut the edge, edges here and I'm just going to make sure I'm cutting on the inside of the thickness of the tubing. So I'm just cutting out the tubing part itself. Yeah, switch things around here so you see a little bit better. There you go. And I'm just going to cut into this tube just a bunch of you know straight slices and then I'm going to cut those out and then probably use a sanding, the flap disc smooth it out a little bit better and then I'm gonna fit the hinge cylinder up there and make sure it's square or perpendicular to the actual surface of that swing arm and you'll see that in a second so.
Is it really not complicated? So you just want to pay attention to it and flow through it properly. And if you angle your grinder like that and then just move it up and down, that creates kind of a similar radius to what you're looking for, depending you know, the flatter you keep it, the, the more you know, shallow the cut's going to be if you keep it pretty vertical like that, but still angled a little bit, it's going to allow you to dig in there and get into the mimic the, the profile of that hinge cylinder. So once that's all done, then what we can do is get in there, make sure that hinge cylinder fits in there properly. So we're going to do the other side. And let me, you've just seen how I do that, I'm going to have to go through that again. So let me pause on this and then I'll jump right back in when we're ready to go on putting it together. So we finished cutting out the other side of that notch and now what we're going to do is put the hinge cylinder up against the cutouts and make sure that we've got it perpendicular to the face of the, the swing arm there. We don't want it angled forward or back or like left to right I guess. <clears throat> Check it on both sides here. And usually you can see pretty quickly that there's going to be a gap in there that you're going to need to either sand out or allow it to move in a little bit more. Usually what happens is when I've cut this out, the edges are, aren't cut down enough and I'd always rather have to sand a little bit more out and, um, or cut, cut it out in this case here. See it's going down on the sides there. Rather than have done too much, so it's a lot easier to take them off than just to add things back on. So just going to smooth out the edges here, like the, um, the sides of the tubing, and then that'll allow that hinge cylinder to slide into them a little bit more. So we're just going down um, the edges just to trim them a smidge here, and then that should actually fit everything all in together. So I'll just come on back and talk when we get to that point. There we go, and it's sort of fit, fitting in a lot nicer into the into the arm there. Check the other side as well. Cool. And if you have another hinge cylinder, you can stack it on top of this one to get a little bit more of a length to put up against your square, and that'll help. You'll see the position better. So once we've got the swing arm all done, now we want to be able to put it onto the across the back of the truck. So I've got these quarter inch plates of steel that I cut out from some plate steel. And I'm just using my digital angle finder here to make sure that I've got it perpendicular to that tower there. And the, re the reason I say perpendicular is because usually the, the trucks aren't perfectly level when you're working on them. They might have a bit of a rake or whatever. So you want to make sure that you're measuring whatever the angle of the truck is. And in this case, I got the front a little bit higher because I got it up on the driveway there and the back edge is down on the pavement, which is a little lower. So I'm gonna take that into account when I'm measuring out what I, what's gonna be per perpendicular here. So I didn't like that angle there, popped it off. We're just going to do it again. And as you're welding, understand too that it's going to pull on the metal as it cools. So you want to hold it, make sure you got a really good firm grip on it and check your, your angles as well as you're going through and, and tightening it up and you know, welding it into the, that tower there. Put a little tack in there, bend it, make sure you're kind of reefing on it to get it to where you want it, left and right, forward and back. And then once you've got that all angled in, what we're going to be doing now is putting it in using the clamp just to hold it makes it a little easier um, get that welded in and then we're going to be able to put the hinge cylinder in there and put the top cap on to make sure that the top plate of the hinge is going to be parallel to that bottom plate we don't want them on different angles so we want to put the one in first make sure we weld it in really nicely and then get the top one on
don't rush through this process because if you do, you're going to regret it later. Just take your time, make sure you get it all exactly where you want it to be. And then we can put the hinge cylinder in there, get the top plate on, and then weld that into place. It's a subtle move when you weld something and so just hold it as it's cooling, but you'll feel it as you weld it, it'll pull on that metal as it's cooling. So I'm make sure those are parallel, forward and back, side to side. Cool. Good to go. Here we go. So then across the back, once we get that swing arm in. Now what we want to do is make sure we've got it far enough back from the door. See that chrome bar across the top of the picture there? That sticks out behind the door and you want to make sure that whatever you're putting across the back is going to clear that. So in this case I've got a tire post that I want to put up. The tire itself or the wheel is going to be angled forward and so if I have that post too close to the door it's not going to fit where I want it to be and then I also want to get a table in front of that tire post and across the entire back of the swing arm so I've got to build that thing back far enough that any latches or the table itself and the post and the wheel aren't going to be too close to the actual door so the way I do that is I put the swing arm across and then I put because that's where the swing arm is going to start. And then where the level is, I put where I want the swing arm to be. And you can see how that's a little further back from the actual swing arm itself. So what I'm doing here is taking a digital, I guess it's a protractor, I guess, I don't know. And I'm measuring off what the angle of the swing arm coming off that hinge needs to be to come across the back of the truck where that yellow level is. So I want to measure that angle from the hinge out to, to wherever I want the bend to be on that swing arm. I want to figure out what's that angle to that level. And then once I've done that, so let's say it's, you know, 70 degrees or whatever, well, the difference between 70 and 90 is 20. So I'm going to cut a 10 degree angle across the back of that swing arm so that I can, so in this case, it's 155, so minus, you know, from 180, so that's 25 degrees. So I'm going to do a 12 and a half degree angle that you'll see in a second as I cut that out across the back of that swing arm to take a little slice out. And then when I cut that piece out and then fold or bend the swing arm in, now I've got that 155 or rather 25 degree angle across the, the back edge there so that it goes across the back of the truck far, 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 far enough out from the back of the truck to not impact anything in behind there. So this is another little tricky spot where you want to make sure you've got everything. So, so I'm just going to go to 10, 10 and a half, 11, I don't know what am I looking for, I think probably 10 and a half degrees there. So go to 21. And then what I'm going to do is, okay, so how many inches do I want that bend to be? And then I'm going to be able to mark it, move that swing arm out, or take it off the, the hinge there, and then build out a, um, a look, or cut out a little slice so that I can cut that swing arm out and then build it on across the back properly. So we're just going to build out um, or rather mark out that little slice that we're going to take off there. So there's where, where the left hand side of where I'm standing, kind of the, the sharp point of that V. That's sort of the back edge of the, the swing arm. So it's going to be behind the truck. And I'm going to cut out that little V all the way around and just leave that back edge intact. Fold the swing arm on that um, cut out, weld it together, and then it's going to create a bend in the swing arm, which you'll see in a minute that I'm going to be able to bring it across the back of the truck, um, straight across, and then I'm going to put another cut and bend on the other side to bring it forward to get to the latch. So we're just going to cut this 
little notch out it's pretty pretty tricky I guess to make sure you get it in the right position so that when you fold it together you don't have any gaps in there so you just want to do a good job again of this make sure you get a nice tight V in there cut that out I usually take a as you saw a speed square there I put lines all around it so I know I've, I've got them pretty straight I don't ever want to do this just like eyeballing it so I want to make sure I'm following that line because it's so easy to just get off a little bit and then you're just not going to get a tight um, bond in here. You want to make sure these fit together really tight so that when you're welding it there's no gap. It's going to create a much stronger connection obviously you want that you want that tight. We're not cutting it all the way through so you're going to leave that back edge there um, intact. It should bend relatively easy. So we're just going to lean on it. There we go. So we're just going to put that together and we're going to fit it on and then we're going to make sure that um, we like the position and then weld it together. We're going to put a couple of tacks in it and we'll do the complete weld later in case we have to change things. So you can see across the back there that it's parallel right across the back to the truck. And I'm going to do a lot of measuring on each side to make sure I've got it at the right position. And then so here you're going to see that the front edge of that swing arm is far enough back from the, the door to give me the clearance I need for the wheel and the drop down table that's going to fit in between the door and the tire post. So just making sure I've got it at the right distance from either side. Your time to do this. Pretty important, don't rush. Again, this is another key point. And then when you start measuring out your tire post, you want to make sure that that swing arm isn't going to move at all. So either have the latch on so it's latched in place or block it out so that it doesn't slide forward or back because when you're taking your measurements for the tire post, you don't want to have this swing arm changing positions on you and then you make the tire post the wrong length. That would not be good. And ideally, and this happens occasionally, somebody will send me a truck to work on, but they don't have the spare wheel that they want to use. And so I've got to guess on what the back space is. And I always prefer to have that of like actual wheel that they're going to be putting on that tire carrier. Again here, just measuring out the distance between the back of the truck, that chrome bar across the front of the top, in the leading edge of that swing arm. Okay, taking this opportunity here, pop the pin in. That's going to be the stop pin that's going to allow us to position the, the swing arm into different areas so we want to be able to lock that in and I like to build it out a little bit because there's a little knurled knob on the top of that swing um, or sorry stop pin and if you weld it the, the cylinder right to the swing arm you won't be able to undo or put back on that knurled knob on the top I take it off so I don't melt anything in the handle sometimes plastic so I'm just going to get this welded in and and then start working on um, building out that swing arm. And once that pin cylinder is um, welded into position, now what we can do is start welding in the, the hinge cylinder itself. And this is important. I like to get this done as soon as I can. A couple of reasons. Number one, that I can get the bushings put in, pressed into it. You'll see that in a minute. These are oil impregnated brass bushings, so the manufacturer of the, the hinge cylinder, they don't want us to weld with those in place, so I want to get all that welding done so I can press those bushings in. And in that way, I know the swing arm is going to be in a really tight position when I've got it on the actual hinge post itself, so I want to get that done. We're just going to weld this in and um, 
and we're good to get it back on the truck. That hinge cylinder all welded into the swing arm. Now we can press those bushings in. So I just have this 20 ton Harbor Freight press. Works great. Don't try and hammer these in. I've tried that in the past. It does not work as nearly as well as pressing them in like this. This is much, much more consistent and just, just slide. They slide in a whole lot more effectively than if you were trying to dash these in with a mallet. And way less likely to press out or expand the end of the um, bushing as well, which makes it a lot easier to get the securing bolt through them. This works out really well. And just take your time when you're going through this, but once that's all in place, then we can get the swing arm back into the back of the truck and you'll see that I did the cutout of the other side too where the latch is going to be over on the right. Got that all done. Got those um, little cutouts all welded into position. And so now what I'm going to do is just you know, tap that bolt in there and then make sure that I've got the swing arm level across the back. If you do need to make any adjustments, you want to make sure you do that before you finally weld in the the top and bottom plates of the, the hinge body there just to make sure that you've got that um, that swing arm level across the back because if those plates are tilted a little bit and even if they were flat before if for whatever reason when you're actually putting the uh, welding the swing arm onto the hinge cylinder if it was just off a little bit by the time it, that swing arm gets to the other end there across your back of your truck can be a pretty significant difference so you want to make sure that um, you've got that level and you may have to uh, tweak or adjust the top or bottom top and or bottom plates of your hinge post there so make sure you've got that all sorted out make those measurements make sure you've got it all pretty straight across the back and that you've got it where you want it to be because it's an, another important time to make sure you've got that all done so bushings are in place so this shouldn't move around too much but i always like to get that bottom nut on there crank it nice and tight make sure that it's going to be where I want it to be. Cool, just checking for level, everything looks good. Now we can get that latch post put in. It doesn't need to necessarily be as big as the, the hinge post, but I just wanted to balance things out nicely. So I got that all into position. I like where the swing arm was, so we welded those plates in. And the latch, got that in, just built a little block out underneath it. I like to have that nice solid steel on steel connection. I tried it on the side there. You can see the cutout mark. I didn't like that, so I just moved it down to below. Thought it was sticking out too far on the side. So now we're working on the tire post. Pretty straightforward. So you want to put your wheel up there on a table or something. Figure out where you want the height. And then from your tire plate that you're going to use to connect the wheel to the tire post. You want to figure out, okay, where do I want that to be in relation to where I want the wheel to be. 
and then you're just going to measure out where you want the top of that swing arm to come in because it's going to come 90 degrees forward into the back of that plate and then you're just going to cut an angle of about 20 degrees uh, at the end of that tire neck in order to angle the tire plate forward to mimic the angle of that rear wheel I just or the rear window I think that looks really good. So what we've done here is it's a GX so the distance from the wheel well front wheel well to the rear wheel well is 72 inches so I'm making these rock slider main rails these are two by two three sixteenth inch thick uh, square tubing and they're 70 inches long and I just cut them at an angle here at the end sometimes I do 30 just felt like doing 45 on this one and then what I'll do is bend this back kick out here to 90 degrees and it's about 34 inches from the back here to where it comes into the right there that marks 34 inches where it comes into the main reel so what we're going to do is so i'm going to it's probably going to be cut here but i just cut a little extra here so then what i'll do is not quite a full bend so mm, 50 degrees maybe to the end not not 90 and that's the um forward i guess outer rail and this one's about eight and a half inches to the outside from the main rail and this one's going to be about five five and a half inches to the outside rail and then we're going to put two around tubing um, connectors in there and do the same thing on the other side so that'll, that'll be obviously the passenger side and this will be the driver's side and so i just have a trace out on the floor for a gx sliders and i just mark it on just pop it in there and lay them down and then i'll cope out the end here so that it fits around this tube here and then i'll cope out the two sides here as well um, for the short they're about three and a half or so inches those little connector pieces so anyways i use this affordable bender with the guy it's not they're not cheap but you know as i was other bender machines that are automatic ones are super expensive. So uh, I've got a few different dies. I've got the one and three quarter inch, which is what I use for these slider tubes. And then I've got a one and a half and a, and a one. So, and anyways, so it's pretty boring watching me bend tubing. So I'm really just cranking down on this. So, and then see that starts. It's noisy and it's annoying and it's a lot of work, but that's okay. I don't do enough of it to worry about getting an air pneumatic thing. So anyways, that just keeps pulling through in there and bends it out. So I'm going to bend this one to 90 degrees, cut the end. It's going to be, that's the angle that I cut off from the other one on the back kick out. And I'll come on back when I got all these bent and cut actually I'll, I'll show you how i do the the coping of the ends so they made up nicely um where it goes to the square tubing here is just a straight cut but where it's gonna cope into the end here and then on these extensions it's a uh, bit more of a curve okay let me bend some of this tubing and i'll That's be fine good. <laughs> i was just bending this in it started to collapse on me and I was like that's a weird feeling then I looked underneath here and the, the whole bracket's starting to bend over and I would imagine it's the DOM tubing is a lot stronger than ERW and that's probably what's causing it so I gotta get this done so I am not going to be able to wait till I get a replacement on that bracket so I'm gonna have to make one crud Looks like it's quarter inch steel with a little 10 gauge plate on the top. So let me get that sorted out. Oh my goodness. Okay, let's catch up on where we're at. So what we've done here is we've made the two rock sliders. So this is obviously only one. The other one's in the house. Um, but this is a deal here. So we've got about eight and a half inches from the uh, outside of the main tube to the out of, outside of the kick out and about a little over five and a half inches from the um, outside of the main tube to the outside of the um, outer rail or tube on the things. And we've got some little supports here 
and I just got this at about a 45 degree angle, I think I mentioned the other day. So this is all done. I'll put this back inside, get it all uh, ready to go. And so here's what we're doing now with uh, the plates. So this is going to be a, um, it's going to go like this, I think. Yeah, so there's the factory edge here. And I'm going to put that right on my vise for the, actually, I'll show you that right now. We're going to put that right in the vise for the, drill the hole, come on, to drill the hole for the, the um, hinge bolt. And what we're going to do here is just get this all squared up into the, um, into the vise here. And I've got it lined up and all you need to do is get it pretty darn close and flush here. So what I'm going to do is get that right on there, drill that hole through the top plate until it gets into the bottom um, plate and then take the top plate out, drill a hole for the bolt in the bottom plate and then take that out and put it in the top plate. And now I've got the, the size of the hole that I need for the hinge bolt. And it'll be perfectly centered above each one and flush against this edge here, the factory edge, which is gonna go up against the post for the hinge. And you're gonna see that later. Cool. So this is gonna be the tire plate. This is a typical six lug, five and a half inch, or I think it's one, 139.7 millimeters. Um, bolt pattern. I'm going to put three bolts in here for now. Might put another couple in for the license plate holder, but we're going to, I'll figure out that later. And um, so then what we're going to do here is uh, put a grid on here because when I get the tire post on, um, the bolt's going to go through here and on this side it's going to go up against the truck this way like that so the truck's over to the right and then that'll be the neck of the tire carrier it's going to go into the back there so these grids are good to have on here because it's going to make sure that you get your tire neck on uh, you know lined up with the edge so you're not twisted a bit so anyways i'm going to drill these um fit those into a wheel i've got bunch of wheels over there so i'm just gonna put it in there i'll show you um, but really what i'm gonna do is take the m12 lug nut or leg bolt lug bolt and make this hole just a little bit bigger than the bolt so it wiggles around a little bit and then when i'm putting this up against the back of the wheel and then welding the lug bolts into the tire plate it's going to self-center itself on the wheel with the lug bolts on one side and the lug nuts on the other. So I'm going to show you that later, but. Here we got the plate done and in place, but not exactly the way I want it to be. And I want to show you what I mean here. So we've got the plate all drilled out. It's a little oversized. You can see the, the bolts fit in. That cone is inside the, the hole there. However, let's take a look at this on the other side. So which, which one is it? It's uh, this one here. So see how it's not centered? We want to make sure that's centered and that all the, all the, the cone nuts are centered in each little hole. So we're going to move it over like that and then tighten it up a little bit more. And that is going to help and we're going to move the plate around a little bit like that. And then once we've done that and we, I got to put the phone down, but once we've wiggled the plate around and tightened up the bolts and we look at them and they're all centered for the most part in each of these little holes. And then, and then what we're going to do is look to make sure that the bolts, the lug bolts are sticking straight out from the tire plate and not at a weird angle. And then we know we're ready to start welding them in. So let me, let me wiggle that in, tighten it up a bit more. Okay, so we're all set now. So you can see the bolts are all sticking straight out of the plate, coming straight out through the wheel, and good to go. All centered for the most part in those little, um, I guess, bolt holes, whatever, lug bolt holes. So we're gonna tap some weld on the back here. So we're gonna 
connect our little electro or ground there and then zap some welds on each opposite side and then we are uh is that straight i guess it is and then we're pop that off and then weld it in completely and then we're ready to stick that aside and wait till we're ready to pop it onto the tire carrier Okay, now we're back to working on the bumper. So we're working on the tubing here for the sides of the bumper. And we just want to bend those out. The bottom one, a um, little less of a bend at the end than the top tube. It's going to come around the side because it has to connect a little bit more into the side of the, the hinge tower. Which is why I made the latch post on the other side at the same height so I can get the similar height of the side tubing. We're just checking, make sure we get them even on each side. So I just use one to match up with the other. Seems to go along pretty, pretty, pretty smoothly for the most part. So if you have a more expensive bender, it's probably a little easier. But this thing starting to wear it down. I think. Actually, I ended up changing jacks because that one was bugging me. So I pulled the jack out of the forerunner. That. So now what we're working on here is the, the ends. We want to make sure we cut the ends so that we can fit the tubing into the tire post or the hinge post rather and underneath that cross tube across the back of the truck and then we're going to cut out the little connector tubes so we're just going to cope out the ends of the, the tubing here so it all fits together nicely. And if I'm doing a whole whack load of tubing, I have a tubing notcher, I can set up a hole saw in there and get it going. But for just a handful of notches, then I'm just gonna do it by hand. It's really not that, not that hard. You can just sort of guess on what you think the profile would be if you played this up against another piece of tubing. Uh, and what I find is easiest to do is just get a nice full cutoff wheel there and just keep going around that that line that you've put on the tubing. You're not trying to cut through it all in one pass because you're going to create too many you know, cut extension marks. But if you just sort of slowly work your way down, you'll see it creates a nice, pretty nice smooth line or notch in the tubing. And once this all comes apart, you'll see it actually is pretty close. And then you just touch it up a bit with the flap test there on the other grinder. And then that actually gets it all pretty darn tight and um, you'll get better at it the more you do for sure of it. And then if you're doing a bunch of them, what you could do is you could create a little template out of some plastic and you know do it off one that's already the shape you want and then you just take that little plastic sleeve, slide it down the tubing that you want where you want it to cut and then just trace out the end of that template and then that way you've got the same line on each piece of tubing and you just got to slide it along the tubing to get it to where you want it to be. And then you cut through that, sand it out to the lines and then you're good to go. So that's actually not too too bad at all. It's working pretty good. And this is a kind of, you know, Always a nerve-wracking part of the job is cutting through somebody's bumper cover. So just take your time on that. Make sure you mark mark off where you want it to be. I've already done that here, obviously, and get some marker on the bumper, and then just use the your cutoff wheel. I would wear safety glasses and gloves because when you're using that cutoff wheel on that bumper cover, that plastic is hot when it flies off and gets on your hand. And you do not want that on your face or in your eyes. So, looks like we jumped ahead here. So we welded in the tubing, did some brush guards on there. We've got the table all welded into the swing arm and tire plates on. So we welded that into position, and then it's done some coating. Obviously, we got that all done, and it's looking pretty good.
and we finally got the whole deal put together and all coated up and we used a Duraback 18 coating on here and that's what the client was looking for. It's a rough rubberized bed liner coating so we just brushed that on with a roller actually and did that with everything off the truck and then welded the box sliders in and then touched up the ends of the welds and we've got uh, this one and a half inch tubing on the back side panels there with a one inch brush guard across the top and we've got an aluminum table here the little clasp everything came together pretty nice and one and three quarter inch uh, tubing for the rock slider so we get the plate laid all wired in and that came together pretty nicely so pretty happy with how that build turned out and yeah it looks pretty sharp really tightens everything up on the truck